Brothers, just I just came from Kenya this yesterday morning, and uh, on Sunday, this Sunday that just passed, at the end of my trip, I met a man who had converted to Islam. I was not an ordinary man. This guy was an Anglican bishop. Anglican bishop. An Anglican bishop. He had. He was in charge of the whole Western Diocese, the whole Diocese of Western Kenya. <coughs> Forty parishes, something like 400 and something churches, all under him. And he showed us some pictures. One picture of, those, of this guy standing next to, I don't know, what's his name, Edward Kennan. You know John J. Case? I don't know, brother-in-law or whatever, or something like that, and some other big shots. The guy is a professor in psychology. He's a counselor. He's taught at universities in America, in Oregon, and in California. The church, really, believe me, you know, they look after people. That's what it's about. That's his job. His whole life has been working for the church. <clears throat> he had a beautiful car, a beautiful house, of course he's lost all of that. This guy didn't have a, now doesn't he have a pair of socks. People said to him, you're mad. He said, you gave up your car and your house and your income for Islam. Now he's running after a tutu. The tutu is like these taxis that everyone squeezes in, you know, they call it a tutu. They, you know, these taxis that everyone crew screw. Now he's He's running for one of those. This is a bishop. The guy doesn't know how to pair of socks. He left all of that for his name. And he was happy. He didn't bother him. And as we all agreed, what he said, what you know when he was talking about why he became Muslim, his just heart was not happy. His heart was not happy. He had all of these things. He had all of these material things. And on top of that, position, power, respect. But he wasn't happy in his heart. None of it made him happy. He just questioning why. He just couldn't, funnily enough, he said, you know what? When I thought about it, I couldn't put my hand on my heart and say that when I stand in front of God, I'm going to go to heaven. That's how unconvinced he was about Christianity. He went to Masjid al-Aqsa, which was part of a Christian group, tour group. They were going to the Holy Land. Saw the Muslims praying. And that's it. Touched his heart so much. <coughs> and there he was. But this is the thing. You know? All that power and all that power. What was it? Nothing. The true wealth is the happiness in the heart. What does it matter if you're a multi-millionaire? What does it matter if you're a multi-millionaire and you're a miserable? What benefit is that going to achieve for you? What does it give you? You have all of that and you're not happy. And then what need do you have for the world and the things of the world? If your heart is happy, what have you lost? If your heart is happy, even if you've got nothing, even if you are running for a matutu with no socks, right? But if your heart is happy, then what does it matter? You've got all the wealth you need. And that's the reality. The real success is what is in this heart of yours. That's where the real success is. The real joy, that's what all of these people, that, that's why they drink. You know why they drink alcohol? That's because that's what they're looking for. They're looking just to be happy. Maybe just for a little bit. They seek it in these things, in music. Why do they listen to music? Because it takes them away. For that little bit of moment while they're plugged in, right? They feel a little bit happy. And they sit and watch these movies and they escape. 
and they feel a little bit, as they imagine, happy. Although, what they don't realize is all of these things are like a drug. They're like a drug in the sense that it works for a bit, but then your body becomes immunized to it. That's what happens. And then you're always chasing the high. You're always trying to get back that nice feeling you had when you started smoking spliff and taking heroin or whatever it is. You felt good in the beginning, but you lose it. And then you always try to chase that feeling you had, and you never could get it. And that's why you take more and more, and you smoke more and more, and you drink more and more. Until what happens, you just become an addict. And then what you find you're doing is that you're not even enjoying it anymore. You're just doing it because you've got so used to doing it. That's it.